Hi, welcome to the 14 day weather forecast. The equinox has been and gone, so autumn proper has started. And right on cue, cooler conditions have arrived. But how are things looking as we head through the next two weeks? I'll begin by taking a look at the view across Europe and the North Atlantic. The animation runs from 18 GMT, Tuesday the 27th. To begin with, low pressure is dominating things, centred to the east of the UK, and we're under this cool and showery north or northwesterly airflow. Also, there are some longer outbreaks of rain here pushing across southwestern parts of Britain. In the short term, not very much changes, but high pressure starts to build in a little bit from the west or tries to, but then as we go through Friday, it's all change. It looks as though we could be seeing the first really autumnal spell of weather, wet and windy. The yellow and orange shade in here indicates heavy outbreaks of rain and the tightly packed isobars close to it are pointing towards very strong winds. Now the wet weather quickly moves southeastwards. It clears away, showery conditions follow, but then as we go into the early part of next week, high pressure starts to build, drier and potentially more settled conditions returning, especially to the south. What all that means in terms of the air temperature profile through the week, here's the animation. To begin with, greens cover in the UK, it's, it's quite a chilly, cool air mass below the 30-year average temperatures at about 1,500 metres above sea level. Things vary through the week, although on the whole, it's not really until we go through the last few days that the yellows and oranges return. That's much warmer air associated with that area of high pressure which is building up from the south and the southwest. Quite a lot happening through the first week and I think it's just worth taking a closer look at Friday's developments because as I said it looks very autumnal, wet and windy conditions and it's a strong jet stream which is powering things heading right across the UK there, the area of low pressure centred over Iceland. These charts from the UK Met Office, UKV model, illustrate things quite nicely. Wind gusts on the left show the risk of gales, especially in western coastal counties and across the north. The precipitation charts, the middle one is for 12 GMT, the one on the right hand side, 18 GMT, indicate heavy outbursts of rain moving southeastwards across all parts of the UK. So it does look as though this will be our first taste of typical autumnal wet and windy conditions. In terms of temperatures through the first week down at the ground level, these are forecast maximums at 15 GMT Wednesday the 28th, 15 16s in southern and central regions, cooler there in the north. Moving forwards to Friday as the wet and windy weather pushes southeastwards, not much difference in the south, at this point probably just ahead of the cloud and the rain, cooler there in the north, single figures. Then by Sunday, again, 16, 17s perhaps in the south, the southeast, cooler in the northwest. But by Tuesday, as the area of high pressure starts to build, temperatures correspondingly rise. And this shows quite a warm picture. 2021 in England there, even in the northeast, 18 Celsius, so 64 Fahrenheit would be quite warm for the early part of October. Rainfall. Days 0 to 5, the chart on the left is from the ECM model, on the right, the GFS. Rain in all parts of the UK, fairly even distribution, in large part associated, I would suggest, with that band of wet weather which pushes south eastwards through Friday and into Saturday. But looking at the charts for days 0 to 10, rain totals in much of southern and central Britain haven't increased by much at all. It, therefore, it's indicating a lot of dry weather through days 5 to 10 in the south. But in the north, the amounts have picked up quite, a, quite markedly, especially in the northwest there on the ECM chart. 
the reds and oranges indicating high totals through the 10-day period. So, do the deterministic models agree with each other at the end of the first week, or have they all gone off in different directions? The GFS, Tuesday the 4th of October, high pressure, much more influential there, especially over southern and central Britain. The Canadian model, a similar story. The German icon, an Atlantic flow there pushing into the northwest, but high pressure to the south. And the European ECM, consistent once more, although perhaps there, the relatively closely packed isobars of the northwest indicating a greater chance of wet and windy periods. Finally, the UK Met Office. Everything here may be a little bit further south, with the Atlantic influence perhaps therefore pushing down from the north at times. But I think taking all of those deterministics together, they suggest a relatively high degree of confidence that by the end of the first week, high pressure will be a big player in the UK's weather, especially in the southern half of it more unsettled or at least changeable as you head north and northwest. That would tie in quite nicely with the ECM rain chart for days 0 to 10, which I just showed a little bit earlier. Well, that takes us to the end of week one, but what about week two, the trends and the probabilities as we head through it? 16-day GEFS plot for London. Air mass temperatures across the top, they start above a 30-year average. Most of the runs are above a thick black line, the 30-year norm. They dip, though, later on, and there is something of a cooling trend showing up, especially towards the end of the period. As we head through the, into and through the second week of October, most, many of the runs are dipping below that 30-year average. Rain. The number of spikes along the bottom here is fairly consistent. There are a few ongoing, not very many, pointing towards a lot of dry weather through the second week. The influence of high pressure being strongly suggested. The two meter temperatures for London, so the data table generated from the GEFS, probably above average early on, but there is a cooling trend there. It's not a very steep one, but the amount of yellow increases later on. Those are runs going for maximums of 11 to 15 Celsius. Ties in quite nicely with the 850 HPA temperature profile, which I discussed on the previous uh, slide. Up to Manchester, not really very much to say because similar being the operative point, um, not much difference at all to the London chart. Above average, air mass temperatures initially dipping later on. Rainfall, well, spikes show up throughout the period, but there aren't very many of them, although there are more than there were on the London one, and one or two of them are very big. But all in all, probably a reasonable amount of dry weather, if this is right. Two metre uh, temperature data table for Manchester, once more, that cooling trend is visible, albeit at a slightly lower level, cooler as you head northwards. And finally, a look at Glasgow, air mass temperatures across the top, following the same trend, above the average, then below it. The risk of rain, again, it's a very, very similar story. The spikes continue to show up through the second week, from more of them than there were on the Manchester plot, which in turn had more than the London one, it continues the idea that as you head northwest, the risk of rain is increasing. Two meter temperatures for Glasgow, very consistent. A cooling trend, green starting to increase there. Those are the runs going for a maximum between six and 10 Celsius but it's the yellows which are remaining dominant, so 11 to 15 Celsius. Again, it fits in with that profile of cooler conditions as you head further northwest. The 10-day GEFS mean surface level pressure plot. So Friday, the 7th of October, high pressure to the south, low pressure to the northwest, 
quite a typical pattern really for the UK throughout much of the year, nothing too out of the ordinary here. I think the question mark is just how far northwards the high pressures influence extends, but it really points towards drier and more settled conditions, warmer ones too, being favoured more so in the south than in the north. The European ECM, very consistent at the same time. High pressure there to the south, maybe to the southeast over continental Europe, more of an Atlantic flow in the north, especially the northwest. Again, tying in quite nicely with the deterministic ECM 10 day rainfall chart. Finally, the data table showing mean surface level pressure for York. It's generated from the GEFS. There isn't a strong trend through the second week. Uh, the orange here indicating runs going for between 1,026 and 1,040 millibars remains fairly constant, the percentage of them at least. The yellows fair decrease for a time and then increase. Perhaps more green runs through the middle part in the second half of the week, uh, which suggests lower pressure, so 996 to 1,010 millibars. There isn't really a strong trend though to pick up on here. It's, it's difficult to draw too many conclusions from it, but perhaps suggesting there won't be that much rain around through the second week, at least compared to the average. So to summarize, week one, it's a cool and showery start, and there is a risk of more persistent outbreaks of rain at times in the northeast. It then turns wet and windy across all parts of the UK during Friday, and that may last into Saturday. Beyond that, there is a signal for it to begin to turn drier in the south, uh, but the north of the UK could stay more unsettled, so a greater chance of rain and stronger winds there. Week two, there is a rain risk, but it's mostly in the north, not exclusively though. There could well be some rain around even in southern counties. Temperatures start above the average, but there's a signal for it to cool down later on. With high pressure having a good deal of influence, especially in the southern half of the UK, there is a chance of fog starting to become more widespread on some nights. And at this time of year, it could be slow to clear. So, there we have it, a mixed bag all in all, that period of wet and windy autumnal weather during Friday and Saturday. In the first week, high pressure perhaps returns after it clears away, especially in the south. That could produce some warmer days, but there is that risk, as I suggest, of nighttime fog. And were that to linger into the day, it would be pegging back temperatures significantly. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful. If you did, then as ever, do please remember to hit the like and subscribe buttons below. Thank you for watching now. Bye.